try it again because I don't even know how you start something like this. Uh, just looked over at Babe who's sitting in the corner and he just said, just kind of like you just did, just talk. So I'm going to just talk. Um, video journal brain dump number one from this place. Uh, not the video brain dump I had been planning for this week. I had thought I was going to do another closet chat, sit in my closet on the floor, my little safe space talking about what to do if you find yourself being someone who doesn't love or enjoy pregnancy and just the ways I found joy when I could through that. But obviously we are not in a closet. We are currently sitting in a hospital and at least I have a reason for why I wasn't loving my pregnancy or at least it's part of it. It's roped in there, I guess. Maybe I wouldn't have loved being pregnant either way, but, uh, I know I've shared some stuff on Instagram and all of that, just some of the issues I'd been having during pregnancy um, that I chalked up to pregnancy symptoms. Um, everyone was very helpful. Um, at one point, I reached out just asking about nosebleeds and sinus issues, and all of those things are very common in pregnancy. So if you're having those symptoms, don't freak out when I share this next Thing. if I do decide to share this anywhere other than just having it for my own brain dump because I've these help me but um, everything I read was saying pregnancy symptoms i would never been a sinus sufferer before so I just didn't know what to expect um, finally decided to go to the ENT after a few months um, once my eye, which is actually looking really good today because the steroids we've taken to help baby um, have also seemed to at least lower the swelling in my eye some, but about this all started, it's been a, it's been a whirlwind of, I think it's been a week, it's been maybe a little over a week now, but uh, basically found out that it is not pregnancy related. Um, I have a, I thought I could do this because the tears were gone, but I have a pretty rare form of uh, a nasal cancer um, that is going to need to be addressed fairly quickly. Um, and so, yeah, um, we, are, we have been in and out of hospitals since Friday of like a week ago, and it is now, what is today, uh, Wednesday, Thursday, today is Thursday, so almost two weeks, we've been in and out of hospitals for two weeks, thankfully we got to go home for a little bit, um, to kind of discuss with some other doctors, and all of those things, and we are now in Advent Orlando, being well taken care of here, um, baby is going to be coming soon, much sooner than planned, but they have been very baby strong, which is great, um, and we made it to 32 weeks, so that was what, once all this started, I was like, if we can make it to 32 weeks, that will be great. Um, obviously, longer would be good for baby, but baby, every, all the doctors feel like baby will be safe, um, they will have to spend some time in the NICU. But they're looking really strong, and now we're just hoping for a hyper-mature baby, which I told baby they're going to continue through their life. They're just going to be a very mature baby. That's, that's how we're going we're gonna to do this, um, so that I can start chemo next week, basically, um, because they need, I have a tuber growing that started here. And it's started to grow, so it's pushing on my eye, which is what's causing the protrusion out here and affecting my vision. Um, it's also kind of gone up here, and it's pushing against my skull base into... It hasn't, from what they've seen, um, 
because of baby, we also can't do a lot of the uh, contrast like scans and stuff. We've done no contrast up to this point. So from what they're seeing, it's just touching here, um, pushing up into my brain cavity, I guess, but it's not on or in my brain. Uh, but once baby's here, we'll get a few more uh, scans with contrast that'll show them a little bit more what they're working with. But either way, the chemo has to start first uh, before any surgeries or anything can be discussed. Um, and so we are just moving forward a step at a time. And, you know, this is never something you wish for anyone. And watching it happen, I still sometimes don't feel, I mean, I know I'm sitting in a hospital bed, but when I tell the story, sometimes it doesn't feel like I'm talking about myself. Um, it gets more real as I do and as um, plans get made. Um, but it's just a lot to take in. Um, there have been a lot of moments. The first hospital stay was really rough. Um, just getting all those initial feedback from doctors. Um, it's a lot to take in. It's a lot to process. Your brain is just going 5 million miles a minute. Uh, especially because they, you know, they start out just saying aggressive tumor. So in my mind at first, that's, that means quick growing, right? Um, they need to see what's happening. But then you get a, a doctor that tells you that aggressive means most likely they believe it's malignant. Um, and just what that looks like. Um, so then, you know, you start the biopsies and the MRIs and I always thought I was really good with medical stuff. Um, and for the most part, I still think I am. I have the shots, the, I did a biopsy with, apparently made it through without any, he didn't even end up doing localized anesthesia because obviously they can't put me under with baby and, um, he was just going to do some localized numbing, um, but made sure we were in an operating room because there was just a lot of bleeding. It's a pretty vascular tumor. So, um, but I was, so I was awake through the whole thing and he was going to do localized numbing and ended up not doing that either. I didn't need it, I guess. Um, for the samples he took, he had said he was going to do it once he got a little like further up and just didn't end up needing it made it through that, but what I apparently can't do is sit in an MRI box <laughs> for very long without having a, uh, I guess it was an anxiety attack, and just, yeah. But I finally made it through the MRI on my second round. I've never been <laughs> whispered about by doctors before, but I'm pretty sure they whispered about me when I came back in the room, because it was the people that did my first one when I had to, like, tell them to stop, because I was going to get sick. Um, and so when I got wheeled back into the room, it was just funny. I, I, I knew I was like, they're like, oh gosh, she's back. <laughs> but we made it through. Um, if you ever find yourself in an MRI experience and need, they did not offer music. Um, that was not an option, but someone told me to, um, so if someone told me at first to visualize that didn't work for me, um, someone else told me to try and make beats to the sounds that you hear. And while I couldn't figure out the beats, I'm not a very good beatboxer apparently, uh, I started listening to the sounds and trying to like link it to songs I knew. And so I just started singing and I started with Big Butts. That was the first one that sounded like something I knew. So some Sir Mix a lot. And I'm usually really good with, like, remembering lyrics to full songs, but apparently in intense situations, all I could get through is the chorus. So I just sang a lot of choruses and tried to make myself remember the words to the songs. Um, but I know this is just a brain dump of here's where we are now. We're... doing cancer, I guess, like, I, I 
don't say that word much. I just say, this is what's next, because when I say it, it doesn't... I don't know, it's just kind of hard to say, but... Right now we're currently pregnant, and we have cancer, and soon we will not be pregnant, but we will still have cancer, and we'll figure it out a step at a time. Um, I am going to continue to do these videos, whether I keep them just for myself, or I share them somewhere. Um, I may, you know, I... You ask yourself... It's hard. It's really hard not to ask yourself why, but there's no, you know, there's no reason in the sense of, like, you know, you hear stories about people you love getting cancer, and you ask, like, why, like, what, you know. And, you know, they're asking me, do I smoke? No, I don't. Never smoked. I mean, you know, took a puff of a cigarette at one point when I was, like, you know, a teenager, but that was it. Um, was I around woodworking and chemical, like, do I have a job in chemicals? No. Um. So nothing that they have, would, like, pinpoint as a why. Um, and so, you know, babe and I have just been trying to tell ourselves that, you know, there's a, there's a something bigger that we don't see um, happening. And maybe part of it is, you know, sharing what we're walking through in some way can help someone else in the future. Then that's part of you know, our story. And um, I've always been a pretty open person with uh, the things I share. Um, you know, our lives, our journey, it's always a big part of, like, just who I am. And so we may kind of share some of this. And, you know, there's parts we'll keep to ourselves because some of it's just hard to share, but, um, walking through it together has been, you know, I could be more grateful to have him, and this has also showed us how grateful we are for our support system, uh, we have a great support system, and Babe and I have, I mean, we've obviously had some pretty rough, like, crap in our family lives, um, just my brother passed away from a drug overdose. Oh gosh, I'm like, sorry guys, this is, sometimes I can't tell what my nose is doing right now. Um, pause. Okay. One, sometimes the crying actually helps because most of the time I can't blow my nose. I'm not really supposed to blow my nose, at least hard, but sometimes when I cry, it helps me kind of relieve some of the pressure that's sitting in my face. And so it'll, it'll at least help, but no, no one wants to see that. Um, sometimes it is intriguing, actually, but you got to be asked. It's like, I feel like I'm not going to just subject you to nose stuff. Um, but I mean, we've had some rough stuff. Um, like I said, my, my brother and just some stuff with Andrew's mom and um but we've always been the caretakers um more than needing to receive care and so learning to do that is I think going to be a process but we're uh you know we showed up at the first hospital our ENT originally sent us to Mayo if you live in Florida and you're pregnant don't go to Mayo. Mayo does not take pregnant patients. So they admitted us through the ER, but couldn't admit us to Mayo because they don't treat anyone over 20 weeks. Sorry, uh, someone walked in. Uh, Mayo does not treat anyone over 20 weeks because they do not have obstetrics or pediatrics there at the hospital. So then we were, we're in Jacksonville trying to figure out where to go next. She's trying to get us a hospital transfer that was taking a very long time. Um, so we ultimately decided to leave, check ourselves in at the hospital, Baptist Hospital in Jacksonville. And you know, the whole time you're just thinking about making the right decisions. Should I go? The other place REMT recommended was going up to Gainesville. Do we drive to Gainesville at one o'clock in the morning? 
or do we go closer to hold where our support system is meeting here at Advent, but he didn't even throw that out there as an option for like what he saw. He was like, you need to go to Mayo or you need to go to Gatesville. Then when we were at Mayo, they recommended Baptist because it's a high risk OB hospital. Um, and they have a good, you know, they just said Baptist is a, is a great choice. So because it was one o'clock in the morning, we decided to go to Baptist, um, and, uh, since then, there have just been a lot of good confirmations that we made the right decision because they got us in quick. The doctors there were amazing. They started tests right away so that we at least got some answers that they needed. It was Labor Day weekend when all this started, which is why our ENT who initially found the mass and basically said, like, this isn't something I can help you with, I mean, He's just an outpatient ENT. Um, he said, because it's the holiday weekend and this needs to be addressed stat, I recommend going and checking yourself in through an ER somewhere. So I'm so glad he recommended that. Throughout that entire Labor Day weekend, I was getting tests, biopsies, all the screens happened in Jacksonville. They then were wonderful because... And we'll, I'll talk about advocating for yourself at another time, but it's hugely important. Uh, we basically just said, like, if you don't believe that this is where we need to be, please be honest with us. Send us somewhere else. And they were wonderful and basically came to us with that after they'd done all the testing and said, we believe that you should go to Miami. <laughs> so thankfully our, this is a, just tangent, but our, we were able to meet with Miami virtually. He said, I will continue to be on your care from a surgical perspective, but you need to do chemo first, no matter what. Um, and in that sense, I recommend being somewhere close to home because of your support system. So this was a long way to get to the place where because we are more people pleasers and we've been the caregivers, um, we started out this journey kind of like, we knew, we were like, we just need some time to be by ourselves and try and process this, but just know that at least for us, one day was enough. Um, once we started having people come, it was a big help because when you are, you know, you we just do so much. We've, we've kind of been our own little island for a long time. You know, that's we were on the road, just the two of us, and it was wonderful. And we do really well, the two of us making decisions. But when you get into a situation like this where it's so intense and you're getting information all the time, especially right away, like you're just going to get information overload every single hour, really, things change. And so when we were alone, um, you know, we have not turned the TV on once in these hospitals because when we're alone, we just kind of sit here together and process both individually, trying to be there for each other, um, as well as processing together and just kind of laying shell-shocked. So having those people come in and just be support when you need it, um, even just being a body in the room, just to kind of break up some of the tension is huge, but people want to help. And so us figuring out how to let them help us well without that also being overwhelming is going to be a bit of a journey and something we have to learn as we go. But um, it has shown us how much that is needed. So um, I just, my heart breaks for people who don't have a strong support system and especially someone to advocate for them in situations like these. Um, it's just... It's a whole nother thing, but our support has been great and we're grateful for that. And just learning to navigate that is a different thing as well. So, um, I think this is probably where I'm going to end this for now, but we are good. I'm trying to stay positive. Um, I think that's been a big thing. Like there are definitely moments where I'm not, um, and that's harder to, you know, get out of my head and 
but I've been really big. We had a hospitalist in Jacksonville who was like, I don't know what you believe, but uh, I'm all about some manifesting, like your brain, your body connection is huge. And I, I do believe that. I believe that you're, you know, you can speak things and pray for things and, you know, whether you believe in God and pray or whether you just believe in vibes and positive energy. I believe in all of, all of that. And he, um, you know, recommended manifesting and, um, watching a documentary that we started, got a little overwhelmed with and turned off. Um, we'll finish it later. But, um, after we, before we came to the hospital, I said specifically, like, I want to make it to 32 weeks and baby, I told baby because before all of this, we didn't know if baby was head down yet. They were not at our last ultrasound. So I just told baby, I said, repeat after me. I am head down. I am four point or four pounds, two ounces and ultrasound confirmed they were head down the next morning. We got the measurements and they literally measured. They came in and gave us like a 1,900 something, something grams. Was it grams? And we had to convert it and it converted to four pounds, 0.23 ounces. So just another huge confirmation that one, like your brain and your body connection is huge, but also it just meant a lot to show that like baby's kind of telling us we can move forward with labor because having to make that decision over like trying to do chemo with baby in, which is something we really didn't want. Um, but obviously we're having to make that decision for not just myself, but for a baby to come at 32 weeks. Um, that was just a helpful to know that like moving forward with labor is going to be okay. Baby is strong. They're going to be okay. And, you know, one of the other things we said was we should have gone earlier or should we have gone earlier? And we're trying not to play that game, but it's hard not to. Um, but obviously if we'd gone any earlier and found out about this, those discussions about chemo versus when to bring baby would have been very different. And so we're grateful that baby is as strong as they are. And we're moving forward this, with this plan for now. So whether I do another one of these tomorrow before baby gets here or my next video dump is with baby. Uh, this has actually been good for my brain. So we're going to go out, have a little walk before people start coming in this afternoon. And that's our new, new news, new journey, new thing. So we'll just kind of tackle it the way we've tackled other things and one step at a time and leaning on each other and the people around us and having faith that it's going to be okay. So, all right. That's it for now.